So we need to check it, obviously. But we know the player will always have an animation, so... Okay. And that's fine. So now we get get a bone from an ID. Get a named bone. This is slow. We should really use the hashed ID, but this is just a test that we're doing, so it's fine. We're just going to call root bone. And now we need to assert on that as well. Just to be safe, because during our testing, you know, we're not even sure if it's going to work yet. So what we want to do is get the uh, position of that bone. And that's it. It becomes an SVEC3. Um, so we just convert that into an IVEC3. And that's all we need to do. And we just need to repeat that for the other section. Okay. Because we remember, if you remember correctly, we access this in two different places. Okay. Let's pull that out. And we'll put that in there. Okay, let's see how well that works. Okay, uh, now this is uh, quite interesting. It seems to be um, not quite what I had in mind. It seems to be always coming from the origin. And now uh, we're going to have to investigate that a little bit. Let's first of all stick a breakpoint here. And what, in fact, now that I look at this, I think, okay, I believe this is actually returning the untransformed, unanimated position from the original mesh, which would be zero, zero, because that root bone is located at that sort of location within our mesh. Um, that is the center of the mesh's bounding box. That kind of makes sense. So what I've actually realized is that this um, position of the bone that we're receiving is actually going to be relative to the position of the player anyway. So we've got the position of the player. Um, that's where we want to add this root position. So it, effectively, if we had like, say, we we're using the arm or something like that, then that would become a lot more interesting. But what we'll do is um, we'll actually just use, continue using the rigid body position. So let me just check if the animated skeleton itself doesn't have a way to fetch uh, some sort of reference point, because that would probably be a bit neater. No, it doesn't really have anything like that, but that's okay because we can just use the rigid body. So, put an assertion in there. Okay, so we actually don't need one, it's not a pointer. So, what's actually happening here is we're, <laughs> we're doing a lot of work, which I don't think we need to. So, what I'm going to do is just make some variables. I will make one for the rigid body too. That's always going to be a pointer. <clears throat> okay, that's good. It's looking a lot better. Right. So. Now we've got much shorter names for everything. All right, now we're in business. Okay, so we're going to take that. And we're going to replace that whole gigantic thing with that. And we're going to add the rigid body position. Form bracket origin plus this. That should be all we need to do. And in the other one, we also do that. So instead, we're we're just calling set pause here. Okay, let's try that out. Oh, I think we've got a compiler error here. There we go. This is wrong because it's odd. Ah, oh, yes, we forgot to put in that. Okay, that should work.
that's looking pretty good. Um, now, if you look closely, you'll see um, the particles are being ejected right from the bottom. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see better. It's kind of hard to see when he's um, not controlled properly, but you can see they're being ejected right from the bottom, just where we want it to be, based on the uh, player player's um, origin plus the bone position. So if I had, say, a, an arm flailing around uh, with particles coming out of it, you would see them coming out of the correct place on the hand or whatever. All right, so I'm just going to um, finish this up for today uh, with this one. Um, so we've done a lot. We've got our particle templates, which we can start adding things into now. Uh, this is our very first one that we've done. Um, there's still a, a long way to go. Uh, we're going to start using these things for the terrain and stuff now, but I hope you enjoyed this whole series, and um, I'll be placing the source files, the handful of source files we made, on my web server if you want to read through them too. So thanks for watching. My name's Derek and this is Bayside Games with Dev Blog.